This is Danny Fair Gamer, my name is Keeper Snowpo and welcome to episode 18 of Driftwood. Uh, after what feels like an entire month, uh, Wednesday classes finally ended, uh, allowing me to venture off toward the club room to see whether or not anyone is around before the schedule practice time. Outside the room, I hear the sound of Jay and Edward talking and find myself pause, pausing at the door to make sure I wasn't interrupting. You really think Ellen will uh, be able to sing uh, si- to sing on stage? Doubt, doubt it, but we should at least get the instrumental down past the amp chord. Uh, I don't think she. I found a little bit at the fact that the two of them have no faith in Ellen's ability to sing. I paused open the door lightly, figure I heard enough to get the gist of the situation. Hey guys. The two clenched towards me as I come in, and it will give a wave. Hey dude, practicing. Nah, we just getting the amps hooked up so we could see what we actually sound like in a performance and shit. I glanced, I glanced down at the two amps that were now connected to the Ilwig and Jay's guitar and bass against the wall. Ah, cool, you guys sounded pretty good yesterday. Been playing since I was 10, Ilwig started freshman year. Jay's been playing bass for over half a decade already and Ilwig has 3 years under his belt. They're both reasonable, talented and skilled. At least from what I've seen, it's impressive. Hopefully, I can get that good with piano if Ellen actually makes the effort to tease me properly. Elwick uh, stretched his arm out before growing out. I'm gonna wanna cross the street and get some food before Matt shows up. Jade looked between Elwick and me before nodding in agreement to Alex's decision to fill his stomach before dealing with the three hours packed practice Mac expected of us. Same, oh by the way, Elric found a spare piano amp in his room Ellen can use. Jay pointed toward an amp setting where Ellen had her piano set up the day before. It should work but it might not have the right model or something, I don't know. Ah, alright, I'm sure she'll appreciate it either way. I was as Ye and Eric leave the room and sit down on one of the cold boxes stuff in the corner of the room waiting for Matt and or Ellen to show up. Honestly, I never even thought to think of the supplies and stuff needed to actually form a band. The amps, the mi- microphones, the instruments, that all a lot of money. If one of our instruments break or anything like that, we'll be shit out of luck unless we can pull together enough money to actually buy a new one. At some point, uh, I want to buy my own piano, but I should probably learn a bit first. The sound of the door cracking open make me glance up to see Ellen slipping into uh, the womb with her thing, cautiously, her eyes da- dying around the womb to make sure she wasn't late. She spotted me and a small but very delightful smile sp- spotted across her lips. I offer her a wave and gesture toward the amps at the court connected to it on the crown in her spot. Afternoon, Elric found you an amp for your piano. For your piano, we weren't sure if it would work or not. Though, Ellen stepped further into the room, approaching me at the boxes with an expressive but still timid look on her face. Oh, that's nice of him. 
yeah i want to try it out i figured maybe we could practice a little bit while we wait for everyone to get here we have about an hour or so o okay ellen set her piano uh cross down yeah ten i have i have something much for you take him Uh, Ellen set the piano case down and start to unpack it, setting it up near the amps again. The fastest, f again, the fastest it can possibly be for Matt, Matt's room without being outside the room. I help out as much as I can, but just end up fumbling with the triangle of cord that and label, trying to see which one will hook up the amp to the piano eventually i get it but we agree, we creed we are creed that with a disgust static noise because the controller are turned all the way up i turn all the knobs to the lowest volume to prevent our ears from bleeding and look back toward ellen sorry try now Ellen hastily reached to push down one of the keys and luckily this time we greeted with the pleasant sound of the note instead of the blast of static. Awesome. Ellen nods and gave the amp a bit more testing playing out a few more nuts, notes before clearing up at me smi and smiling. Oh, oh by the way, Karen says she was busy with something today and she needs my help with something but she wants to go on Tuesday ah all right I ate a lot for lunch today anyway so I, I should be okay honestly I'm a little disappointed I won't be getting to hang out with Ellen aside from behind the piano today I'm starting to find as non-existent excess is is this existence as her company is 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 very pleasant and relaxed to hang out with her okay so hmm, where should I start how about with the basics again I need to ref refresh from the other day Ellen not taking in a deep breath before starting her very amateur style lesson teasing me the very basic of what I need to know in my journey after an acquired amount of time practicing with Ellen just west of the band shows up and we are instructed by Matt to start our routine of performing the one song Ellen managed to come up with today practice goes better than the other day before in terms of people understanding the flow of music and lyric we are actually able to come up with a decent sounding curse with the amps hook up to our instrument ellen sings a bit more proudly but she still holds a bit of anxiety to her words with dedicated quiet a bit from how good she actually sounds hopefully with more convincing she'll be ex she actually Hopefully with more convention, she'll actually believe in herself to the extent of being able to sing on Friday. After a good night's sleep and a good breakfast, the day doesn't go as well as I hoped. Mallet was in the evening worse mood than he was. What? Mallet was in even worse worse mood than he was on Tuesday because of how much he was being interrupted by individual conversation regarding either the party on Friday or the festival. He had to stop his lecture five times today to get the, the point across that people shouldn't talk over him. And even then, people were still chattering and whispering under their breath to one another. 
Either way, Mella doesn't give me much of a hard time, mostly because I've been up to date on all of his assignments and haven't been slacking off in class. Or at least I assume. Maybe he's just going easy on me because I'm still new. I do still get the occasion hello or greeting from the, from students and teachers, but none of them seem very interesting, let alone interesting in me. Alright, your homework uh, tonight is to read chapter 4 and 5 in your textbook. If you fail to do so, I'll be calling your parents and inform them you are a slacker. Dismissed. Uh, instead of heading straight to the cl club room, I glance over to Ellen, who is still sitting in the corner nearest to Mallet desk. Hello. Hey, Ellen. You're going back to the dorm to get your piano. She blinks at me as if I had just spoken another language, surprised by the fact that she's been talked to inside of the classroom. None. No one ever talks to her, so just hearing her name in the class must be startling unless it's Mallet's voice. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, 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 I brought it there this morning. I offer a friendly smile, hoping that Ellen can see that people around her packing up their thing when entirely interesting in our conversation and she didn't have to worry about worry of other judgment. Oh cool, so we can get started right away. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, I wanted to take and try at playing the song you wrote even if I'm terrible at it. I chuckle at my I chuckle at my idea of trying to do something so complex when Ellen has only been teaching me the basic, but I can't help but be eager to get better, can I? She smiled and nod her head. It's kind it's kinda simple so we can try we can try that. Awesome. I collect my belongings and join her in the direction of the direction of the room the band has claimed as its own. Uh, even with earlier guidance, playing this song is a bit harder than I thought it would be and it sounds appealing. Oh god, it sounds like I'm like a dying well. Ellen burst into a laughter that I never heard before, more so than just her complete Jerry Gill, but an actually genius, happy and amused laughter. Just saying it makes me feel better about my process of learning and I just take a deep breath and shake my head. Alright, I should probably be more relaxed, huh? Maybe you could t just tease me the first sex section or the chorus part. And I climb down from her laughing, which is even more awesome and adorable than I had imagined, and try her best to compose herself. Haha, <laughs> hey, hey, I, I think that's a good idea. The uh, the curious is easy to learn. Ellen smiled and played two rotation of the curious for me, letting me do the rest of the work myself. If I fail, she tells me so, but other than that, she isn't much help with regard to how well I'm doing or how badly my tempo is off. I do two rotations, she does two rotations, I do another two rotations soon enough and I start adding in the lyric with her soft tone voice. Having a better idea of the tempo and how it will sound with the actually lyric and the rest of the song, I start to get it cleaner and cleaner. We continue this process until I get it completely perfect and by and by the point Matt is standing in front of us with an impressed look on his face. Nice job Squeaky, you'll have little face getting good in no time. Ellen casts Matt a doubtful look, maybe she dislikes her nickname as much as I dislike my own. I'm starting to think Ellen doesn't like Matt very much or at least doesn't trust him much. Thanks. Anyway, you two seen Elric and Jaron. 
Nah, they might be getting food or something. Uh, Matt whops his chin carelessly before glancing to the door right as Ellen, Ella Elric and Jay walk into the room. Ah, speaking of the devil, let's get started today our last full night of training. Fortunately, I asked you could if we could take festival duty off to Polish up so we might actually be able to accept it for her party. Matt cleared his throat and passed over to the dorm set, sitting down with a slight grin of his face. Which means we get to spend all day tomorrow making you all perfect. As much as I, wa- as much I, w- I want to put practice with the group all day is not entirely needed for me to be there so I might just go and enjoy the fix well for what it's worth and check in on them every now and then maybe go and hang out with Karen or something while the rest of the group gets everything st- sorted out speaking of which I'm sure I hope that Karen and Ellen pay for their own food this time otherwise my wallet is going to start g- going empty with a soft sign and nod taking a step back and let Ellen Patrick with the rest of the group and just listening trying to inter 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 internalize all the things I needed to improve up with uh, with my education in piano after a long two and a half hour of Matt working us we got uh, his decisions we did well enough today to get off early I'm very thank- thankful for this because singing the lyric and tapping my foot to this song without actually getting my hands on any instrument was beyond boring and and unsettling. Elric and Jay pack up immediately wanted to head to the hall, hall back, held back to the dome and have some free time to themselves before it was too late. Matt does the same but on his way he bumped into Karen giving her a slight scoff. <coughs> hey what's it with it? I'm the producer, drummer, and manager of this band here. I'm kind of big. I'm kind of a big deal. Karen rolled her eye, blue eyes, and gave Mac a small pat on the back. Yeah, you keep it up, jump. Yeah, you keep it up, champ. Champ. She pushes ba- past him without another word and look to Ellen and I with a welcoming smile. Hey, you two, where does it go? My treat this time. Y- y- yeah. Oh, you don't have to. It's the least I could do for you taking care of Ellen on Tuesday. Let's go. Karen lead us out of the school and instead of taking us to the beggar across the street we got we we de- what we direct her course back to the doom which I guess is less trouble troublesome for Ellen who opts the, to carry the piano case herself today. I'm confused. Did you already buy the food? Actually, I'm at home cooking. I hope that doesn't change anything. It doesn't change how empty my stomach feels, but it was kind of looking forward to something tasty at the bakery. No, not at all. What did you cook? Ellen smiled and passed lightly into my and pa- pressed lightly into my side to get my attention. Karen's always cook ma- macaroni and cheese. Is that okay? I beam back down at the slow, 
I beam back down at the slowly but surely socialized girl who fortunately has been becoming less and less withdrawn with me over the past two weeks. That's perfectly fine. Do you like it? With a con- content not Ellen glance back at Karen who has an amused look on her face. Yeah, Karen is a good Karen's a good cook. Karen rolled her eyes in disgust as Ellen came in, shaking her head and tossed her arm up in a careless squawk. Tease heartily, but thanks for the compliment. Without much else to say, the three of us make our way into the female dome and sit down at the kitchen doing uh, dinner, <laughs> doing <laughs> kitchen dinner area that the dome has. Karen must be busy because she has several pots filled with the yellow tea covering noodles. The room is gr- relative empty, but the informer's pink hairy girl May is sitting along with a bowl of what looks like the macaroni macaroni Karen made. Karen fix Karen fixes Ellen and me a bowl before making her own and we sit down at the table and give me some company. May has a rather sour look on her face as she takes small pain bites of Karen's cooking. Uh, Ellen seemed to notice this just as quickly as I do and mother softly toward May who barely noticed she being spoken to. Is the food not good? Uh, hey hey oh it's just a little cheesy is all. Well that's the point of macaroni and cheese isn't it? May give me a bland look. Yeah. Well next time I just add Tabasco so will that be better? May face Whip, squink up, co- cross out by the idea. You know you're ruining my appetite. Technically, it's not your food to begin with. Made less our soft cone and stand up, pushing the bowl toward us. Well, sorry, next time I just off. The pink haired girl angrily shove off, shove out of the room as if the macaroni she stole that Carrie has cooked ruined her day. The three of us chuckled quietly among ourselves before enjoying Karen's health decent meal. May was right, it's, it is a little bit too cheesy after all. The sound of Ellen and Karen giggling and making gu- girlish noises filled the room of Karen's attempt to tease Ellen how to play a silly game on the internet. Ah, get him, get him! I was with a small sign, feeling slightly embarrassed that the girls I managed to become friends with were kind of nerds. Nerdy. Although the more time I spend with Ellen, the more I feel like I wouldn't trade up hanging out with her for someone else. She missed her her to the intent is fun to speak with her. Whether it's because I'm curious about her or that I'm just becoming personally attracted to her, I think I like to stay her friend. And this project with the band is really going to set that goal of mine in place. I'm not sure what is it is about Ellen that strikes me as so unique. She just like my she just like any other shy person I talk to at the least for at least for the most part, but something about her is different. Ah, you got him! <laughs> Ellen giggled at Karen's over-exhausted reaction. Karen, you take this, you take this game too seriously. Bah, you're just not used to having fun. The two smirk at one another before looking at me and smiling. B- b- want to turn, Marcus? Ah, no, I'm okay. Can clamor pounce at my response. In protest, she grabbed me by my, the shoulder, shoulder with enough of a grab to make my body cranks. The pain, even if it isn't really there, I should 
into my body like a dagger and makes me start outwork to sp into space beyond Karen and Ella both. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It take I take in a deep breath and lower my body down, having having out with a bit of a pain. Let let go, please. That will hurt. Huh? Sorry, didn't know your arm was sore. It it's all right. Just don't grab me by the shoulders, please. And then tears tears at me with a mix of interesting and concern inside her clam clam gleaming green eyes. She frowned as I, uh, as if upset about what Kellen did and stand up from her seat reaching down to make to take my sleeve and yank me upward as if I had just fell fell face first in the mud. Are, are you okay? She said she settled me down in the chair she was sitting in and slowly but surely my shoulder stopped tension up. I yeah sorry. I wished to rub my shoulder comf comfortably but as I wished up with my arm another hung pang of pain drive up my neck. Ah! Are you sure you're alright bud? I take a deep breath and rise my other arm upward just to make sure it was just my left arm. No longer feeling any riding pain, I sink into Karen's chair and nodded dimly. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just freaked out a little there. We notice. A clearance to Karen who has a slightly up -put, put look on her face and then to Ellen who just who is frowning and looking like she's on the verge of crying because of what just happened to me. The sign of Ellen's eye tearing up is both confusing and incredibly painful for some reason. I didn't mean to make her get upset or sad, or, no, or nor did I even want to. Sorry Ellen, I didn't mean to freak you out like that. Ellen takes in a deep breath, we, we compose herself by rubbing at her cheeks and eyes Writing the tears that were forming in them. I I was just worried something bad might happen. She paused for a moment and sniffled cl uh, clearly woke up from this situation with me having a mental or pistol freak out like that. It's sort of overwhelming but I expect as much from what I seen her. Ellen has trouble with social situation if that much wasn't ob obvious. Karen signed, signed uh, quickly patting Ellen directly on the head. It's all right, Ellen. Marcus is fine. See, Karen gave me a return grin as I suge suggesting that I should smile too, just to play along, even if the joke wasn't even funny. I offer Ellen a small smile at this, at least cast away the sad, sadness, sad look on her face. I don't want to see Ellen hurt like that again. I'm sure it has some sort of importance to her. I think I should just head back and need to get some sleep. Karen and Ellen both gave a small nod of hesitation and agreement. All right, well, good to see you again. Ellen takes my arm in hers, guiding me to the door. It's not really needed, but I don't want to ca uh, cast her off trying to be helpful. It might dismiss her already weakened emotion state and make her feel un unwelcome. I offer a wave goodbye to Karen and move out of her out of the room and into the hallway with Ellen. Sorry, I'm all right, Willie. Really. It's just it it was just a hiccup. Ellen paused to live, holding my arm a little tighter with hers clutching at my forearm like I was a teddy bear. What happened? Uh, it's nothing. Is that how Matt go got your nickname? Is that how Matt got your nickname? Yeah, I think that's where he got it from. I offer Ellen a small, a small smile in attempt to get her to realize I really am fine. Do you like the nickname he gave you? For a moment she actually think about it, but in the end, she, in, shakes her head briskly. Not really. Want me to try and tell him to stop? If you can. 
All right, I have a I have a word with him, but I'm pretty tired, and should get going. I wag my arm, trying my best to give me Ellen off me in a way that doesn't offend her. Instead of her gripping loose, it tightens and she clings to my arm, closer, looking at me clo- curiously. Want me to walk with you back to my room? Ellen nodded instantly as if not thinking that was strange at all. I mean, I can walk perfectly fine on my own, but if Ellen is actually that worried about me, I suppose there is no point to stop in point in stopping her. If you like. Ellen smiled and tucked gently at my arm with her sleeve hand pulling me along the hallway with a hesitant hesitant speed. Yeah, yeah, just, just to make sure. I held her an eyebrow and wise my bow, bow as her as we leave the girls' room and step out into the cool night air. Just to make sure of what? That you're okay. I feel guilty making Ellen worry about my safety is just silly. It really isn't that big a deal. Bill of a deal, but thank you for being so concerned. She gave me a bright smile, politely ignoring my claim of to being all right. I suppose I'd be a little worried about Ellen or Karen if they started to acting up, like I am imagining I do when those episodes strikes. With sort of pressure, the fact I should probably tell the nurse or Elizabeth about feeling lightheaded, like she asked last week. Inside the dorm, I find myself feeling a little embarrassed with Ellen clanking my arm, being pulled around by a mostly fragile looking girl. I, a uh, girl, could raise a few questions, especially within the dorm. Uh, luckily, I don't get any weird looks, but Ellen does peer up at me curiously as we reach the stairs inside, leading to the second floor. Are you on the second floor too, or? Yep. I take a step up the stairs before rising above and peering at Eddie curiously. You and Karen have never been in my room yet. I've been in both of yours several times, seems kind of unfair. Ellen tilts her head to the side, thinking about this for a moment. Yeah, that's true. We make it down the... We make it down the hallway before arriving at my door. Perhaps I should have you guys over as guests sometime. Although, I'm curious to look at my neighbor's door, hoping that for the love of all things, Mac will be around or hear us outside his room. Matt lives right, live right next door. Ellen whole body cr- cranks just as mine did at the front of Mac and peeks over to the door of in a mix of hesitation and fear. Do, do you think he would bother us if we came over? I can't say for certain he... The sound of a door knock turning makes us freeze and look at one another having the same response of being silent to avoid possible contact with Matt. Oddly enough, it's my door that's opening and from the inside. Matt step out into the hallway and give us a crystal ca- wave. Oh hey, what's up with you two? For a moment I stare at Matt wondering how in the world he even managed to get into my room. How did you get in my room? That the window. Helen hides behind my shoulder for the most part not wanting to be brought into the conversation one bit of fear of my trying to grab her again. How the hell did you get in through my window? Alright, it's a long story, but I was out in the wood, right? I raised my brow skeptically and met, pondering whether or not it's even worth believing a word he's saying at this point. Alright. So I was out in the woods getting my mojo flowing and stuff, meditation and communing with the spirit. So then I heard the rustling in the bus so I went to check it out and shit. I glared down and Ellen checking to see if she had any idea what Matt was wumbling about. She was the same confused look on her face. 
Okay, and what was it? I tell you, man, it leaps out of at me like a predator. It was a massive, furious squirrel. A squirrel attacked you. Yeah, dude, the thing was trying to steal my trail mix, so I had to book it before he called it back up. So you climb up the side of my doom and kick in my window. Well, I jamming it open. I jamming it open. I'm not that irresponsible, but the point is that was no time for me to walk all the way around the dome. It was life or death, bro. All right, well, good to see you alive. Matt nods and gives us a wave as he opens his own door and sta- start to step inside. Yeah, I was pretty crazy, but in a way, while I was in your room, I kind of had to take a crap and I may or may not have clutched your toilet. Her door slams shut, leaving me to look back at Ellen in disbelief. I'm not really sure how I survived so far this year. Maybe he get nicer or less gross. Maybe, but anyway, thanks for coming with Ellen. I tease, offering Ellen a grateful smile that provokes one back in return. But I need to get to, but I need to get the toilet fixed. I'll talk to you tomorrow. We have a band practice in the morning, right? Ellen gave a small nod before slowly starting to lose a grip on my arm as if preparing to let me go. Think you're ready to sing tomorrow night? The manner mention of singing at the party notably prompted Ellen grip on my sleeve to tighten. She must still be very nervous about it. Instead of answering, she just shot a doubtful glance at the floor and I'm forced to give her head a comfort pat with she flinch against, flinching against. Hey, don't worry about it. We'll do fine. You'll be doing great every. You've been doing great every day. I'm sure people will love this song. Ellen squeezes, at, squeezes at the fabric of my uniform, sleeve for the for a moment more until she decides to let go and take a step away. It's kind of strange, like trying to set an animal free that follow you home back off into the wild. I don't mind Ellen, but I feel almost like as if I'm, if doing the, as if doing the time I'm with her, she begun to think I'm a new safe haven for her, sort of like caring is. This is actually really adorable, but it just adds more strain to what I say and how much I want to make sure I don't hurt her feeling or upset her upset her in some way. Ellen take another step back and smile a little more comfortable at my last remark about the band first gig. Okay. I offer a small nut and wheeze to push open my door, pausing for a moment to see if Ellen was going to leave or not. Instead of leaving, she just stand in the hallway with a musing sm- Medical smile and um, adoring her lips for a few moments. I raise my eyebrow in confusion and hold my door half open halfway inside of my own room as I look at her curiously. Ellen seems to cast onto her mistake before I can say anything and blushes a dark way quickly, lifting up a loosely sleeve arm and give me a wave goodbye. The sign of her of the cute girl waving at me in such a manner makes me smile and to an extent make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Not wanting to have to make Ellen suffer an awkward, awkward goodbye, I simply offer a way back and smile. Good night, Ellen. Night. I rush from my door as she turns and scores off like a mouse, vanish behind a corner to head back to her own dorm room. I'm not exactly sure what it is that been getting into me lately, but I've been noticing Ellen more and more. Maybe it's just because I'm getting closer with Ellen in general, or perhaps I'm starting to grow fond of her adorableness, but she is very beautiful in her own way. The complex 
is unsettling at first, but once you get used to it, it adds to the content of how dark and silky her hair, hair is and well how generously color her eye are. It is impossible that I have a cross. It is possible that I have a cross on the sheepish social outcast who accepted me, accepted my attempt to become her friend. I don't like jumping to conclusion, so perhaps I'm noting how pretty she is just now. Regardless, there are other matters at hand aside from a silly concept of romance like the band and how everything will work out tomorrow night. I'm positive we will do a fantastic. Uh, too fantastic but I should do something special to award Ellen for what she's done to include me in this venture as well as the other in the band. It's the very least I can do for my new friend and piano instructor. Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode here. The <laughs> it was a little longer than I expected but anyway, I hope you like this episode and I will see you in the next one.